Hello everyone, this is Jackie Williams. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, I wanna share with you some tips for successful heat embossing. Many times I hear from people that they just can't get it right and aren't successful, and hopefully I can share with you some tips that will help you have success with heat embossing. So first I wanna just quickly show you what supplies you need. Now you need some embossing powders. Uh, Stampin' Up! has recently changed their suppliers. It's this uh, brand now, it's called Wow. And I have the copper, gold, and silver in this brand, but I still have the old versions of the clear, black, and the white. But just know if you order them today, they will come in these containers. So these are the six colors that we currently carry. You will also need some embossing ink, otherwise known as Versamark. And I strongly suggest that you also get an ink refill when you purchase Versamark because it does dry out very quickly. And one of the things that causes issues with heat embossing is having a dry or semi-dry Versamark pad. So if your pad is always nice and wet because you've got a refill to add a few drops to it, then you will have much better success. Then it's also handy to have an emboss buddy or an anti-static bag, and this is to remove any static or wetness that might be on your project before you apply the powder. And then some other tools that are nice is a soft brush to brush away any excess powder and some reverse tweezers that have a heat proof tip so that the whole um, mechanism doesn't get hot and burn your fingers. You of course will also need a heat tool, something like this, to melt your powder. And you may also find it handy to have a microfiber cloth just to brush away any excess powder that may be left from your emboss buddy. And of course you are going to need some cardstock, so let's give this a try. So I'm going to stamp with the sketched butterflies and I'm going to be using this little cluster of small butterflies and I have crumb cake here. So the first thing I'd want to do is just go over my paper or cardstock with the emboss buddy and that just removes any fingerprints or anything that might be somewhat sticky on there so my powder is only going to stick to the ink. And then I'll use my Versamark Stamp my butterflies across my cardstock like this. And then I always like to make sure this is closed so that none of the powder gets into the ink pad. Now the Versamark is very sticky, so anything that's floating in the air will um, somehow just get on it. So I recommend that you keep the lid on as much as possible. And for this, project, I'm going to use the gold embossing powder. Now some people like to have a spoon in their powder. I actually really hate having gritty things on my fingers, so I prefer to just scoop it up with the powder and then uh, just shake off the excess. I didn't mention it in the supplies, but it is also really handy to have a tray like this that you can then empty out with this little funnel end and uh, use it for your different colors. Now here's where we would take the brush and just remove any stray powder marks. You shouldn't have too many if you've used the emboss buddy, but if you leave them on there, they will be on there permanently. So now's the time to remove them. And then for this piece, I could probably hold it with my hands, but um, for small pieces, you definitely wanna have some tweezers. Now a couple of tips for you when using your heat tool. When you first turn it on, you want to just give it a few seconds to warm up. If you start blowing when the, the, the heat is actually cold, you're just going to blow the powder around on your paper and then you're going to have stray marks. So you want it to be nice and hot. Another tip is to start the heat actually on the back of your project and that just partially melts the powder. And again, this is to prevent the um, heat blowing right on the project and just blowing the powder away if, if the powder is already partially um, heated. I'm just gonna stop there and show you the difference. So this is how you can tell 
if the powder has been melted or not. You see how it's quite dull and then the melted powder is very shiny. Then at this point I stop and I just give it another little check and make sure that it is completely shiny everywhere. Now another little thing you can do with your embossing powder is I'm just going to take my Versamark and very lightly just go around the edges just to give this an edge, which I might actually distress later. I don't want it to be a perfect line, but just a little bit of gold around the edge. So sometimes it's actually handy to have one Versamark that's very clean and juicy, and then to have one that's a little more dry so that you can do techniques like this and you're not getting a lot of ink on there. So I guess with that tip, if you decide you want to have a brand new ink pad and get a refill and just start fresh and clean, maybe keep your old one because it is nice to have an old, a dry older one sometimes for some techniques if you just want little light dustings of the ink. But also uh, some of the techniques are quite messy and maybe you want to use your messy one so you're not uh, contaminating your nice new one. And then just a little bonus tip here. I'm going to use the stippled roses image and just use Versamark without embossing powder. Versamark is also great as just kind of a watermark ink. And you'll find when you first stamp it, you can't see really much of anything, but as it kind of dries or develops, it does get a little bit darker. So you can see that bottom one maybe a little bit better. So you just have some interest there in the background. So here is the finished project with this background. So I finished that with the large butterfly from Sketched Butterflies and I have just added a little bit of watercolor and um, I've also gold embossed the sentiment on Blackberry Bliss with gold. So there's a lot of gold on here, but I think it is quite nice. Now let's move on to using black embossing powder. So whether you're using black embossing powder on white or white embossing powder on black, this is where there's not a lot of room for error because any imperfections are very obvious. So first we'll start with the Emboss Buddy. And then I'm going to stamp the Large Posy from the Poised Posy stamp set. And then just straight down and straight back up. It's kind of unsatisfying because you can't see anything. Now my black powder I use quite a lot. Um, so I have this in its own container because I just leave it out. And then you just shake off the excess. And here's where you'll want to use this soft brush to just get any stray bits out that you can. Okay, and then again, it's very important that you make sure your heat tool is hot. And I would strongly recommend that you start heating from the back of the image so that you're not blowing black powder specks around on your white cardstock. And then go ahead and turn it over. And there we go, that's very crisp. And here is my finished image. I colored that with Stampin' Blends. It was actually quite nice to color with the blends with the black lines embossed because the black lines stayed very crisp and dark black, as you can see. And then I've just cut that out with the new Greetings for Every Season tag die. And I've actually stacked that up on layers of black cardstock just for something a little bit different. And then next I want to share with you uh, the clear embossing powder. So for this little sample, I'm going to use the Happiest Day stamp set. I'm just gonna use this little cute happy butterfly here. Clearly I was on a butterfly theme for this video. So I'm going to stamp the outline in Memento Tuxedo Black. Now there's lots of ways to use clear embossing powder. This is just one way. And then I'm going to use Lemon Lolly and stamp the lower leaves and then use Bubble Bath and stamp the upper leaves. I mean, not leaves, wings. And we just need to clean those off 
they're nice and clean now and we'll use our Versamark and the same stamps I'm just gonna stamp right over top now there's lots of ways to use clear embossing powder but um, this is one of my favorite ways is just stamping right over the top of your color to give uh, that image some additional texture and shine take away any extra powder there okay now our butterfly wings you can see are nice and shiny like extra shiny so this is a nice way to add detail to images or have an image stand out more than it would otherwise and here's the finished card that i made i just stamped out a few of those butterflies and then did some on the inside too so there are my samples for the heat embossing tips. I hope you learned something. Please leave me a comment if you did. Also, please leave me a comment if you have some tips that I didn't cover here or if you have any questions. If you have a friend who struggles with heat embossing or could use some of these tips, please feel free to share this video with them. This is Jackie Williams and thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.